am Oliver Sabo, and I am conducting the, the studies on the homework that I get from school each day. So, let's get on with it. Here are the steps to process the data. I have numbers in the data set. Here are all the experiments that I took out. Then, go to the purple arrow. And the data set contains homework and homework slash day data for a total of 81 days. So if we go over to the chart here, we can see this confusing array of stuff. I'll explain it to you. The first column is number of homework. That's basically an event that happens. Second column is frequency, how many times the event to the left happens. Like on on the first column, say I got one homework, that would be in the one group. Relative frequency is the fraction form of the frequency. So you just take the frequency and divide it by the total number of data points. Xi times Fi is crucial in calculating the average, and Xi minus X average squared times Fi is crucial in calculating the var variance and the standard deviation. So the way these bar graphs work, there is the number of homeworks on the horizontal axis and the relative frequency on the vertical axis. So say I were to look at this graph and I found bin number 5. So bin number 5 would be over 5 would be on top of the 5 number on the horizontal axis and we can see that it's about 0 0.24 so we can tell that it's like 0 0.24 that's how you read graphs so about probability these decimals tell you how likely it is that you're going to get that event. So, again, in the bin 5, I get 0 0.24. So, 0 0.24 out of 1, or 24%, is how much, how much chance I have to get 5. So, Next, you might be wondering about the average and the standard deviation. Average is sum i equals 1 through 9 xi times fi, which basically means x1 times f1 plus x2 times f2, etc. until x9 times f9, and then divide that whole thing by the number of data points. The variance is sigma squared, which is that weird little s thing. So that's sum 1, i equals 1 through 9, xi minus x average squared times fi, divided by the total number of data points. So that would be x1 minus a x average squared ti times fi plus x x2 minus average squared times fi, etc. until you get to 9. And then you divide it by the total number of data points. Alright, conclusion. No, wait. So what do you, so what do we calculate the average and the standard deviation for? You might be asking. That bold line in the middle of the chart is the average. See those dotted lines there? We'll explain that in a moment. So we add the standard deviation 
to the average and we get the top part of the range. We subtract the standard deviation from sigma and we get the bottom part of the range. So there is a 68% chance that my teacher will assign anywhere between the lower part of the range, in this case 2.7, and the higher part of the range, in this case 6.3, because the mean is 4.5 and the standard deviation is 1.8. So, do you know how it seems to resemble a bell curve? That's called a normal distribution in a real life. And it's essential to doing the standard deviation and average thing. I hope you enjoyed this presentation. See me. See you again. Goodbye.